Okay, so let's get started. Okay, to get started on this um, jeans to skirt reconstruction, the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to cut the legs off. And what you want to do is make sure you see how um, this points up a little bit when you put the legs together like this. You want to cut just above there uh, so your skirt will lay flat. So what I'm going to do is if I had a... Um, if I had a rotary cutter, I would just cut it right here, but my rotary cutter, I haven't used it in so long, the blade kind of rusted out on me because I haven't used it in quite some time, a couple of years in fact. So I'm going to be using my scissors to cut this out. And I made the mark like that because I want it to be even, and I'm cutting it above the U. And now my skirt lays flat. Now what you want to do is you want to measure all the way around the perimeter of the skirt so you can know what the measurement is, of course. And I think mine's is going to be 24, but I'm going to measure it just to be on the safe side. Oh, no, it's 26. Okay, so that's good. We measure it one more time to make sure because usually it's 24, so 26 is surprising to me. Let me do that one more time. Go all the way around carefully to make sure you did it right. It's best to measure twice and cut once than it is to, yeah, it's 26. So our measurement is 26. So I'm going to take the measurement of 26 inches and I'm going to divide that by either 6 or I'm going to divide it by 8. And whatever number looks best for me is what I'm going to do. 26 divided by 26 divided by 8. Okay, I'm going to use 26 divided by 8 because it's 3 and a quarter. And what that means is we're going to have 8 panels here on the bottom to make our, um, push it up here, eight panels here on the bottom to make our skirt. And um, actually we're gonna have 16, but we're gonna have eight from one color and eight from another color. So the next thing we're gonna do is decide how long we want our um, panels to be. And I want, my panels to be for beauty and you can make this skirt for an adult too it's perfectly fine the average for an adult i would make the panels about 12 inches because we're making a mini skirt but for beauty since she's so short i think i'm going to make hers her panels eight inches and um because she only she's only five she just turned five i'm gonna make her panels eight inches and um see what happens with that eight inches probably would be too long actually so i may have to um take some of the hem out after we try it on her but we'll see but i'm gonna make it eight inches because i want it to go just above above her knees and I also cut open these panels because this is what we're going to the pant legs. I cut down, I don't know if you guys saw that, but actually let me put it back on the camera and show you what I did. I actually, it's like this. I cut open from here to here and then I cut this. So now we have a piece, a huge piece of fabric to work with. And um, what you could do, since I'm making my panels eight inches long and three inches, three and a quarter inches wide, actually you need to ha add another inch on that for a seam allowance. So I'm going to make my panels four and a quarter inches wide. I'm going to mark that out on my fabric here, four and a quarter. 
And actually, I'm going to do four and a half. Four and a quarter right there. That's the width. And I want them to be eight inches long. And then after I take the... Um, take the hem in, which will probably be at half an inch, that would make these panels seven and a half inches long once I put the hem in. Well, actually six inches long once I put the hem in. Six inches probably. No, I'm telling a story. It'll be seven inches long when I put the hem in. And seven inches might actually be around right. So I'm going to come over here and mark eight inches down. I'm going to take half inch for a seam allowance and half inch for the hem. And um, it, uh, the end result will be seven inches. So take that into consideration when you're making your measurements. And usually, like I was saying, adults, we usually do, when I do these, 12 inches. You can work with that. And um, what I'm going to do here is line that up. Yeah, adults, I usually work with 12 inches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out. And then I'm going to use this, what I just drawn out here, as the template. Actually, yeah, as the template for um, cutting out my fabric. And seeing as it looks like I only have enough fabric to do four panels. So originally I wanted to do eight panels, but what I'm going to have to do is do this in three colors instead of two colors like I wanted to do, which is still fine. It's still going to come out cute. So I'm going to take this out. I'm going to cut four panels from this fabric that I have here from the legs. And then I'm going to cut eight panels out of this black which will be the underside of the box pleat and I'm going to probably find a basic blue without the sparkles in it and I'm going to um, use that for the other four panels if I cannot get eight panels out of this fabric that I'm using now so I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and then I'll come back on camera and show you what to do next. One moment. Okay, now we're back and I have, um, actually I decided to go with six inches instead of eight inches because I could get um, six inches, eight panels of six inches out of those two legs and I could instead of eight inches. And also six inches is probably about right for beauty anyway. Probably, actually, I should have went with four inches because she's only, she's not even three and a half feet tall yet. Her, th her thighs are really only eight inches long. I mean, yeah, eight inches long. So I have my stack of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I have a stack of eight of the black as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew one blue side to one black side with the wrong side, the right sides facing. Now, if you want it to have a um, distressed and frayed look like you would have on um, a rag quilt, so you say, you would put the right sides together and leave the seem to be on the outside, but that's not the look that we're going for today. We're going for a polished look, so we're going to put the right sides together. And when you sew it, you want to have one blue, one black, one blue, one black, so on and so forth. That's the way you want to have it. So that's what I'm going to do next. And um, the reason why you want to do that, I'm going to show you, because when we sew it onto the skirt, put the skirt in the, the top of the skirt in view, we sew it onto the top of the skirt, we're going to sew it like this. These two are going to be together, and we're going to put it 
like that. So when you walk, you'll see the blue on the top, but you'll have the black in the middle, and that black is what's going to form our pleat. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these, the blue to the black, and I'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, I'm back, and I've sewed all of the fabric together. I have the, blue, the um, black to the blue alternating in one long strip. This is the long strip here. And um, what we need to do next, I've already ironed down the seams to one side. I ironed them all going this way. Um, that one didn't get quite what I wanted to do. And what you need to do next is finish these seams. Now if you have a serger, you can go ahead and serge the seams and be done with it. If you do not have a serger, you can still finish these seams either with a zigzag or several other stitches that um, I actually did a tutorial on. And the link to the tutorial on how to finish these seams without a serger, there's like five or six different ways if I remember correctly. I know actually ten different ways, but I think I only put five or six on that video. I'm not sure, but you can um, click on the link right there and you will find that video. So that's what I'm going to do next. I think I'm going to do a welt seam. That's how I'm going to finish my seams off. I'm going to do that and then after I do that I'm going to sew this into a loop. And then once I have this sewed into a loop, loop and the seams finished I will be back and then I'll show you the very next thing that we need to do. One moment. Okay, now I sewed this, I um, finished the seams, and I top stitched it when I did the welt, and I sewed it into a loop. Let me show you what the uh, welt seam looks like up close. And the reason why I chose the welt seam, I'm going to zoom in some, the reason why I chose the welt seam is because this is the seam that um, occurs in denim when you buy jeans anyway. Looks just like this. This is the seam that I created on my sewing machine. Here is the other side, the, the front and the inside. And here it is again, the welt seam. And here it is on the outside. So I'm gonna zoom back out. And if you would like to find a video showing how to do this, I did do a tutorial on how to do the welt seam. You could um, click on the video in the description box, or you can click on the video right there. That's the link. And you will find the um, video to show you about five or six different ways to finish your seams without a serger. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to hem this now because it would be a lot easier to hem it now than before we sew it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a quarter of an inch seam. I'm going to fold it up a quarter of an inch and then fold it up another quarter of an inch which would give me a half inch seam. So I'm going to fold it once, iron it, fold it again, iron it, and then top stitch that. And then we will connect it to the top of the skirt. So let me go and hem this and I'll be back and show okay, you how I'm to do back this. And I have hemmed up. You can see this is the wrong side. And this is the right side. I've hemmed that. Now it's time for the next step. What we're going to do is we're going to join this blue together with this blue together in the middle of this um, black square. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to take this seam, bring it to the middle of the black square, like this and you want to bring the other seam okay, here it is. here's the um, blue square we're working with and the other blue square we're working with and this is the black square we're going to join this seam and this seam in the middle of this black square so I'm going to take this and please excuse my nail polish as you guys know I sell cars for a living. 
on eBay and Craigslist and because um, I've said it a couple of times on here and I didn't have time to do this video and fix my nails ahead of time so that's why they look like this but anyway but because I was actually changing spark plugs on a car <laughs> so you bring this one in the middle right here like this make sure it's in the middle then you bring the other to meet in the middle look at your black square and make sure it's in the middle if it's not adjust it and then you're going to put a pin here and you're going to put a pin here and when you're finished it should look like this join at the middle the reason why we're doing this is because when you wear the skirt that is what makes the pleat the box pleat so we're going to go ahead and here's one I did right here as well makes the box pleat you see that and you're going to go ahead and join all of them like this so we join this one so right here let me get the lens one moment we join this one right here so now I'm going to come over and take this one and this one and do the same thing join it here in the middle and I'm going to take bring this one over into the middle as well and once I get them all pinned this is a project you definitely want to use pins on if even if you don't usually use pins you're gonna want to use pins on this one now make sure that it's in the middle before you pin it because you don't want your pleats to be lopsided then you're gonna pin this down and then you want to pin this other side down let me go ahead and um, maneuver this a little bit because it's not laying down neat for me and then we're going to do this to all of the squares when you're done all of the black squares we see I've done three already one two and three when you're done all of your black squares should be on the inside between sandwiched between um, the two blue squares like this and when you're done with that you're gonna go ahead and top stay stitch all the way around here then after we stay stitch that then we can sew it to the top of the jeans and we'll be done so let me go ahead and finish this and then I'm going to stay stitch it and then we're going to attach it to this and we're going to top stitch and we're going to be done I'll be right back okay now you should have something that looks like this you could take the option to sew these pleats down a little bit maybe an inch or so if you want them to lay down flat however I'm not going to go ahead and do that I'm just going to go ahead and attach it to this so now we're going to take the um, top of the denim and we're going to take this circle we just made turn it to the wrong side like this we're going to place this onto the inside and then we're going to um, center, make sure everything's centered, like that. And now we're going to go ahead and, um, well, let me make sure everything's centered, it's centered. And I'm going to make sure I put this with the um, center of the two middle seams here and the side seams. And I'm going to put this, the middle seams in the center of this let me see if I can find the center 
the center of the skirt part. There's a center. I'm going to put a pin to, um, it's not a pin, it's a needle, to mark the center, which is there. And I'm going to put the center of the skirt into the center of the yoke. And now all we have to do is pin around. Go, go, I'm going to go ahead and put the back of the skirt into the center of the yoke as well in the back. And now all I have to do is pin all the way around this, pin all the way around the yoke, pin all the way around the yoke and then sew all the way around and then I'm going to flip it to this side, top stitch it and then it's done. Now when Beauty comes home from school you guys can see her wear it. One moment. Okay I'm back and the uh, skirt is complete. We have the yoke which was the um, pair of pants that we started out with. These blue sections come from the actual pant legs and then this the grayish black section here comes from um, the leftovers from when I made my son a denim backpack and we have the yoke and then we have the bottom and as you can see we have our cute little box pleats and when we wear it it's like this and when you walk they spread out just like a box pleat is supposed to. Now when Beauty comes home from school we'll see if we can get her to model this for us if she's not too sleepy and um, if she yeah if she's not too sleepy she'll model it for us and then you'll see a video and until then I'll see okay, you guys in a minute. here's Beauty in the skirt that we just made. Turn around Beauty. Turn around to the back and to the side is sparkly yeah it is sparkly because we use sparkly uh denim okay so that's how it looks with the with the uh, completed skirt and you can see back up somewhere so we won't cut your head off go back son <laughs> backwards there you go now you can see the completed denim skirt i'm going to go ahead and zoom in for a little bit so you can see the Okay, get back over here. You can hear the other kids outside playing around. That's okay, turn to the back. Your feet itching? Turn to the back. No, Ryan right there. Turn to the back. I see a Ryan. And turn to the side. See, you can never tell you can't even tell that this used to be a pair of pants. Turn back to the front, beauty. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and sign off now. Beauty, say it. Say it with me, Beauty. One, two, three. Happy sewing. Bye. Oh, yeah, you can spin around. Bye. See you guys next time.